Welcome back to another episode of My Legacy Garage. This time around, we're going to pick up right where we left off with this old MG Midget here. We got it to make some noise, but it didn't want to run. Timing's all out of whack, oil is pouring out of it everywhere, and I have a solution to both. Let's start with the oil leak, because it's not going to do anything if it's got oil just pouring onto the ground. Let me show you what we've done so far, and what we're getting ready to do, and then uh, we'll go from there. Hope you enjoy the show. As you can see, the oil slick has been tamed slightly here. It is also spread, so that's fun. I'm pretty sure there's no oil left in this thing at all. Other than that, the only thing that has happened is a little action over here on the side of the engine. We got that oil filter assembly out of there, and I've got that all cleaned up. I took the alternator loose and kind of moved it out of the way so I could actually get in there. And I think the issue mostly was the bolts weren't really tight because, well, I couldn't get any leverage on them. So hopefully that'll fix this. This is all cleaned up. I'm going to go ahead and right stuff it. We're going to put it back together and let it set up, and then hopefully we have something that doesn't leak oil everywhere. That's the plan. Lo and behold, she's all back together. Alternator's back in, spun it over, got good oil pressure, oil all up here on the valves. Started to run out where the valve cover gasket isn't cinched down there. I got the spark plugs all out of it because the next thing we're going to do is turn her over and find top dead center on that number one cylinder and see what we can do about setting some timing. Let's bump her over a little bit the easy way and see if that gets us anywhere. That's both of those valves up. Yes, sir. That bugger is 180 out. That's exactly what's wrong with it. It's 180 degrees out. So this intake valve just closed, which means we are on the compression strip. Pistons all the way at the top. And dang, if that rotor button isn't pointing straight exactly opposite of that number one piston. That sounds to me like somebody done put it in backwards. All right. There's the distributor. As you can see, it came straight out of the engine like that. It should be pointing this way for the number one piston, and it's pointing straight that way. So, I think that if we just turn this 180 degrees and then stub it back in there, we should be good. Let's put the bolts in, tighten everything up. We'll leave the distributor just a little bit loose so we can fine-tune that timing a little bit. But that would explain why it just wouldn't do anything. And You know, if it's just a little bit out, it'll run. It just won't run very good. Being completely backwards, that'll definitely make it not run at all. Time for an update here, folks. This is the base of the distributor right here, and this little clamp that goes around it is what holds it so it doesn't move. Now, the clamp is loose, but it's bolted fast. What I've discovered is the distributor will not seat all the way down in there if you take it out and turn it. so that the rotor is pointing at the number one cylinder. So, it's still on top dead center, it's seated right now, we're just gonna have to make that the number one cylinder, and then change the firing order to adjust. We're gonna try that and see how that goes, cause I don't know how else to do it at this point. The time has come to give it a shot. You have got plug wires in the order that I think it needs to be to fire. Rather than what makes sense. It would appear that it did something worse to it. Let's make sure all the wires are still on, huh? I don't know, fuel maybe? Let's try that.
That was a that was a near thing right there. Here we go. I went ahead and adjusted that distributor just a little bit more. Load her up, crank her off, see what happens. Oh yeah. I think we need a fuel system. It's been a little over a week or so since I messed with this thing. We went away, had a vacation, it was a good time. Now it's time to get back to work. I think we left off with it needs a fuel system set up. So I'm gonna do that, and I think I'm also going to see about switching some plug wires around. Cause that number one plug wire, it's just, it's a little short. And I don't think we're making good contact there, and that might be contributing to the hard start issue. Let's dig into that, see if we can get this thing to actually start and run. And then maybe we'll look into a clutch. So the distributor is now oriented in such a way, and I had to reroute the wires that this number one wire it's a little short and it's not actually all the way on there now these don't just pop off of there but i think if you take the cap off there's a little screw up in there that you can unscrew and pull the wire out and maybe i can switch it with one of the longer ones that's the hope anyway i think i'm going to give that a shot and then well, maybe we'll rig up a fuel system first. Let's do some proof of concept before we go getting too crazy with it, right? I mean, this thing hasn't ran for 40 something years. It might not run at all. Y'all remember this thing? It's been on the channel. It had some action recently and well, in order for that to happen, since I <laughs> stole the gas tank out of it, I had to put the boat tank in the bed and run the fuel line too. I need that back. I win. These carburetors are weird. I think that this and this are like the float bowls and then it sucks the gas over and up through the bottom and this is like your needle that controls, you know, it meters the fuel flow. I'm not really 100% sure how all that works, but we're gonna put some fuel to this and go from there. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, the fuel leaking out everywhere. That's probably bad. Fuel is continuously running out of this thing, which is terrific. And this hose, it's just, it's way too big for that little bitty barb fitting there. So I'm gonna have to come up with a better solution for this, cause that ain't gonna work. After employing some seriously creative engineering and still having a pretty good gasoline leak, we're going to try it anyway and see what happens. Well, that's progress. stuff not just necessarily mgs but anything automotive really i don't really have limits make sure you hit that like button let people know hey this was interesting it ran and second hit the subscribe button if you don't mind it helps us out a lot and it's free to you we appreciate it have a good one i think that those float bowl looking things are actually 
a fuel pump of some sort. It looks like they have a vacuum line or something attached. I'm not sure, but either way, I set the tank on the ground. I'm gonna try starting it again and see if it'll stay running there if it burns that fuel out and that's it. running on the one carburetor just this one so my guess is that it takes a little while for the fuel to actually filter over to this one and make it actually run that's kind of a drag well folks I think uh, I think that's gonna be about it it doesn't have a clutch I think the slave cylinder is bad this up here seems to be working okay there's fluid in it but it's not engaging the clutch at all it doesn't have brakes which isn't really surprising it has disc brakes in the front which I didn't know about until I jacked it up and looked underneath of it that for a slave cylinder. And, uh, well, it doesn't have a cooling system or a fuel system. So that's a lot of, a lot of work to make it drivable is what I'm getting at. Work that I don't necessarily want to do because I don't want to drive it. I can't even get in that. Either. So I think what we're going to do is fire up one more time, confirm it runs, it builds good oil pressure, everything is looking okay, and that that part of it is good. I think I'm just going to sell it. I don't really want it. I bought it just because it was neat and hadn't been run in 40 something years and I'm gonna try and make it start. And I did, it runs. Let's fire it up. Thanks for watching another episode of My Legacy Garage. We'll see you next time.